Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. This is the second video in our chapter number 3 of microwave engineering. We are going to address cylindrical magnetron oscillator. So it is very very clear that the oscillators are generations of the microwave signal. So here the microwave signals are basically the electromagnetic waves that are having the specified frequency range in the values of 1 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz. So now as we are covered with the previous video we have been introduced what exactly the microwave cross field tubes are. So here it is a family where the orientation of the DC electric field and the DC magnetic field is perpendicular to each other. Because of this cross orientation of the electric and magnetic field we call these microwave cross field tubes and the very first device that we have selected to study here that is cylindrical oscillator uh, that is basically the magnetron. So let us see the details. So here we start with our topic that is cylindrical magnetron oscillator. As already mentioned the oscillator is working for the generation of the microwave signal here. So this is microwave energy or microwave signal generator without providing any RF input. So if RF input is provided and if it is getting with the higher amount of magnitude so it is working as amplifier here. So now this is the magnetron having the cross orientation of the DC electric field and that of the DC magnetic field and here it is another term to the title that is cylindrical. So the cylindrical term gives us the idea with respect to the dimensional shape of that particular device. So very first of all we take a simple diagram to explain the cylindrical magnetron oscillator. So in any microwave tube there are two electrodes very very important to us that are cathode and anode. So here in this diagram we have the cathode terminal. So as this is the cross sectional diagram here the cross section of this cathode is having a circular shape. The cathode is always provided negative potential with the heating element so that the free electrons will be generated onto the surface of this cathode device. Now there it is another electrode that is called as anode and anode is always given a positive polarity with the help of DC potential here. So this is the cross sectional diagram anode is again having a circular cross section. If you see a three dimensional view the simplified diagram can be like this that there it is a centrally placed cathode and it is surrounded by anode. The cathode will be a solid body cylinder here whereas anode is having some hollow space inside. So one cylinder inside another cylinder. So here it is cathode and here it is anode. So there it is a potential developed between the cathode and anode. So this is the cross section. Now along with this DC potential applied to these two electrodes there it is the existence of magnetic field. So it is representing the magnetic flux density by capital B sub is 0. So here the plus marking is representing that it is having perpendicular orientation to the plane of the paper. So basically if this completes the cylindrical structure so cathode is inside this particular cylinder there it is a permanent magnet above and below this particular cylindrical structure. So from this particular pole of this magnet to this particular pole of the magnet there it is orientation of the magnetic flux lines. Let us say this is north pole this is south pole. So here the electric field is developed in between these two and the magnetic field is developed like this. So it has a perpendicular orientation hence the name is microwave cross field tubes. So in this particular diagram you see because of the existence of the electric field 
and that of the magnetic field there it will be the effect on to the electron that is generated into the space between the cathode and anode basically it is needed that the electron generated on to the cathode will travel a distance of separation between anode and cathode and will reach to the anode constituting the anode current there and the working of the device will be completed but here as the electron velocity will be governed because of the existence of the anode potential between anode and cathode and the magnetic flux density b0 represented perpendicular to here it will be governed by the two and therefore because of its effect there it will not be a linear or straight path of the electron from cathode to anode like this whereas because of these two especially the magnetic field here perpendicularly oriented it will be having a cycloidal path in the very first lecture we have taken the topics like electron motion in the presence of only electric field electron motion in the presence of only magnetic field and electron motion in the presence of electromagnetic field so thereupon we have also represented the equations of electron motion that we shall be taking with in the help here but before going to that as the simplified circuitry may have given you the idea we shall be taking another diagram that will practically show how exactly the structure of the cylindrical magnetron oscillator is so here we have the diagram as discussed before this is the centrally located cathode terminal and this is the anode terminal here the cutting shows you for the interior portions here so this is the anode and here it is the cathode now because of the dc potential here it is represented v0 between the cathode and anode see the anode body is provided the positive polarity whereas the cathode body is provided the negative polarity so the potential is developed here and b0 is the representation of the magnetic field here so because of the electric field there it will be the electric field intensity that is having a radial direction in between the cathode and the anode so let us say this is the direction here and as it has a cylindrical structure here it will be quite convenient to use the representation system of cylindrical so we take it as erho component in the cylindrical coordinate system we generally have the three components let us say for electric field intensity e bar we have the coefficients along the radial direction e rho along the angular direction e phi and along the vertical direction that is the axis z here that is ez component here so e rho component will be in role there now along with here we have been introduced the two dimensions of the electrodes here as the cathode terminal is a cylinder inside anode terminal also a cylinder the axis of both the electrodes is same therefore the center point with respect to which the radius of the cathode is represented that is having a small a representation whereas small b is representing the radius of the anode here so it is very very clear that small a here i mention radius of cathode small b it is equal to radius of anode now as per as the mathematical analysis of this cylindrical magnetron is concerned we shall be taking the help of the electron motion equations that we have already covered into the first chapter so very first equation with respect to the electron motion we shall be writing it will be d2 rho divided by dt square minus rho in the bracket d phi by dt bracket squared it will be equal to e by m e rho component minus e by m it will be rho into b sub x head into d phi by dt so here we have taken cylindrical system into consideration let us say this is equation number 
along with we have another equation to represent the electron motion that is 1 upon rho d dt of here we have rho square d phi upon dt it is equal to e by m capital B suffix z d rho upon dt let us say this is equation number 2 now in this two equations here we have the ratio E by M. E is the electric charge, M is the mass of the electron. So if you substitute the constant values of the two, E by M ratio, we obtain with the value 1.759 into 10 to the power 11. So the units should be given as C upon kg into the SI system. Now here in the diagram we have represented B sub x 0 for the magnetic field, we have taken positive z direction for the magnetic field orientation. Hence, we have replaced B0 by B sub x z in these two equations. Now, we have equation number 2. We can make some rearrangement and obtain the equation in the new form. So, we shall be writing d dt of, here it is rho square d phi by dt equal to E by M B Z and here the row that it was on to the left hand side we shall be taking here in the RHS so it will be row in multiplication to here we have D row divided by DT so by the next line we can also write it as 1 by 2 omega C into D D T of here row square so let us say this is equation number 3 where LHS is the same ddt of rho square d phi by dt. So in this right hand side we have made one substitution that is omega c. So omega c we have replaced in place of e by m into capital B suffix z, b z component. So omega c is actually the cyclotron angular frequency. We use the word cyclotron because the path of the electron going from cathode to anode is not the straight, it is a cycloidal path. So because of that particular case, we name it as cyclotron angular frequency. Now if we integrate equation number 3, we obtain the new form. So the next equation it will be rho square d phi by dt is equal to 1 by 2 omega c rho square plus some constant added onto the right hand side. Let us say this is our equation number 4. Now here we consider the electron is just generated at the cathode body. So here it is the electron and as far as the space dimensions are concerned here we shall be taking in terms of rho, phi and z, we can put rho is equal to a. So a is the radius of the cathode. So the electron is just generated and it is onto the surface of the cathode. So in this situation, if you put rho is equal to a, the radius of the cathode cylinder, so that time the d phi upon dt will be equal to 0. So here we can relate constant is equal to minus 1 by 2 omega c into a square and the angular velocity we can express as d phi by dt will be equal to 1 by 2 omega c in the bracket 1 minus a square divided by rho square in general. Now as we have seen the effect of the magnetic field onto the moving electron we can give the kinetic energy of the electron by the equation. So the kinetic energy will be expressed in terms of 1 by 2 m v square. So it will be simply equal to E into v here. Now the electron velocity with respect to the rho and phi component can be given as v square is equal to twice small e divided by m in multiplication to capital V is equal to it has two components let us say this is 
v rho square added with v phi square. So for the v rho square, we express it as d rho by dt bracket square and here we express it as rho into d phi by dt bracket square here. So we have expressed here the kinetic energy of the electron generated onto the cathode body. Now the electron is supposed to get from the cathode place up to the anode place. But as it is governed by V0 and B0, these are so adjusted that the electron does not reach to the anode, it just grazes it and comes back to the position of the cathode. So this is the electron. So this is the cycloidal path followed by the electron here. So because of this particular condition, we don't want the electron to reach from cathode to anode. It should return in between the interaction space, I can say. So because of this particular condition, when the electron just grazes the anode, we take the dimension rho is equal to b. So b is the radius of the anode cylinder. So now at this particular condition, the potential V should be completely equal to V0 and the velocity in terms of the radial direction represented as d rho by dt will be equal to 0. Therefore, the equations we can rewrite in the form. First of all, we express the velocity is equal to d phi by dt, the angular one will be equal to 1 by 2 the cyclotron angular frequency omega c in multiplication to 1 minus a square by b square and here we can represent in the modified form that is b square in multiplication to d phi by dt which is bracket squared here is equal to twice e by m into capital V0. So by making a substitution in these two equations here we obtain the relationship that is b square in the bracket 1 by 2 omega c in multiplication to 1 minus a square by b square the square bracket is also squared is equal to here we get twice e by m into capital v0 the anode potential now as the electron just grazes the anode and come back into the space that is between the anode and cathode. So therefore, the cutoff magnetic flux density because of which it is happening, it can be given into the equation form. Here we write B sub x 0 as it is the cutoff. Hence we write B sub x 0 C, it is equal to, we obtain from the above equation, A times V0 M divided by E. So it is under square root, we put the power 1 by 2 divided by b in the bracket 1 minus a square by b square. So I outline this particular equation. This equation is called as Hull's cutoff magnetic flux density and the condition is that if b0, the magnetic flux density is greater than this magnetic flux density cutoff B0C for a fixed value of anode potential V0, the electron will not reach the anode, it will come back to the cathode place. Similarly, we can obtain the equation in terms of the voltage. The voltage equation for the cutoff potential we shall mention V sub is 0C, it is equal to E by A8M in multiplication to b0 square small b square in multiplication to the bracket that has 1 minus a square by b square the bracket is squared. So I also outline this particular equation. So this equation is called as Hull's cutoff potential equation. The name Hull is with regard to its inventor. So this is Hull's cutoff potential represented by V sub x 0 C. Here it will be the condition that when V0 is maintained less than V0 C, 
for a fixed value of magnetic flux density B0, the electron will not reach to the anode. So, this was the voltage equation and earlier it was for the magnetic flux density equation. So, with the understandings of the Hull's cutoff conditions with respect to the voltage equation and the magnetic field density equation, we shall be taking into the next lecture the problem number one onto the cylindrical magnetron oscillator. I hope you are definitely gaining the knowledge of microwave engineering. For more information like this, you can subscribe to Ikeda channel. Thank you.